And I'm gonna punch you out, man. Oh, 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 oh. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. And that's on videotape, so now I'll probably get sued or something for you. Okay. Number twelve. We're on page eighty-two. Problem number twelve. Now they give you a table. You need to look at that table and understand that these are the employment statistics. This is the percentage of the populations employed in the civil workforce for whatever year it is. That table is referred to as a numerical model. A model is simply a picture of the data. So sometimes they do it with a graph. You've seen graphs before, line graphs or whatever. This time they've just built you a table. According to the model, this is problem 12A, what has been the trend in males joining the workforce since 1954? So look at the male workforce. It's been decreasing. It's been decreasing, it's been decreasing and that is all they want. What is the trend? Trend means is it growing, shrinking, or staying the same? And you can look at it and like Gibran said, it is decreasing. Okay. In what five-year interval did the percentage of men who were employed change the most? How will we decide that? What will we have to do to decide that answer? Well, what math do we have to do? What operation? You're going to add some numbers? You're going to subtract some numbers? If we want to know how much it changed, let's just look at 54 to 59. If we want to know how much it changed, what would we do? Subtract. 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 So from 54 to 59, I'm still looking at the male column. From 54 to 59, what is that, 1.2? So it changed 1.2. Could we do the same thing from 59 to 64? And so on and so on and so on. And the question again was, in what interval did the percentage of men change the most? 69 to 74. So we would be looking for where that difference was the biggest number. So where does that happen? 69 to 74. 69 to 74, you said? I think you're right. Good job. Good job. That's easy. The reason I want to do a couple of these is just to show you how easy these problems can be. All right, number 20. Comparing cakes, a bakery sells a 9 by 13 cake for the same price as an 8 inch diameter round cake. All right, so we've got a couple of different cakes. We have the rectangular cake, which is 9 by 13. Should we draw this? I would. And we have a round cake. Um, which is 8 inch diameter. Now you go into the bakery and you're going to buy a cake. And you're a good consumer. You want to get the most for your money, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to know which of these cakes is going to give you the most cake for your dollar. So here we go. They're both the same price. So which one is the best one to buy? Well, how would you go about figuring that out? What would you need to know Don't about you your cake? Find the diameter. Brooke, did you have a thought? Was your hand up? Is that? No, I can't I tell what you're thinking. doing. You're thinking. Mm -hmm. It says the round cake is twice the height of the rectangular cake. So this one is has a height, let's say, of two, and this one has a height of one, because the round one is twice as tall. Mm -hmm. So think of it like this, twice as tall. How about finding the volume? Remember how to find the volume? Exactly. For the rectangular cake, the volume will be length times width times height, which is 13 times 9 times 1, which is what? What's 13 times 9? 117? Mm -hmm. And what, 
those were inches, right? So that's square inches, or cubic inches, I'm sorry, cubic inches. So I can get 117 cubic inches of cake if I buy the rectangle. All right. Now what if I buy the circular cake? You're close, you're close. The formula for the volume of this cake would be pi r squared h. You were thinking of in the right ballpark. Okay, what's my radius? Four. Four, very good, so that's 16 and my height's two. This is 32 pi. Now I need a calculator because I need to compare that number to 117. So I'll take 32 times pi, and that is 100.53 cubic inches. And when you say pi, that's when you're trying to do big one. Mm -hmm. Actually, I use my pi button on my calculator because I have one. Okay. And so do you. But yes, it brings up the 3.14. So which cake is the best deal? The rectangular, the rectangular one. So if you are simply interested in getting the most for your money, you'll buy the rectangular one because you're going to get about six or 17 cubic inches more, right? If you buy that one. Easy, easy, easy. I'm going to ask you to do a couple of these tonight on your own, okay? I'm also going to ask you to solve some equations tonight. So let's look at the next page. And these are equations to solve. And the good news is most of this is review for us already. <coughs> so let's look at that first one. What about this problem bothers you? The fraction. We do not like fractions. fractions. Um, Karen's the only one missing, right? So, Rob, can you focus, please, and take your shirt Now, I don't like the fraction in this problem. How about you, Veronica? You don't like it either? So could we get rid of it? Yes. How could we do that, Veronica? <laughs> Bingo! Let's just times everything by three. Now, is that going to change the zero? Yep. Now, our timesing by three, is that going to change the zero? No. Yep. Nope. So I take three times three times three times three. That's what I end up with. What kind of an equation is that? Uh, quadratic. Quadratic. And what can I do with quadratic equations? Quadratic I can use the quadratic formula. Some of us have not yet memorized the quadratic formula. That would be not a good thing. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. X equals, here we go. I'm going to write down my A, B, and C. What's my A? 3. 3. What's my B? 6. Negative, negative 12. 12. What's my C? Negative 1. Perfect. Now, I'm glad we're doing this because, again, some of you made a mistake on your test. We need to get worked out. Negative B would be 12, right? Yeah. Now, negative 12 squared. Some of you, when you write that, you write it like this that's how you say it. You say negative 12 squared. But then when you square it, you say negative 144. Wrong. What you're really doing is squaring B. You're squaring the negative 12. So what should you get when you square negative 12? You should get positive 144. B squared is always going to be positive. That will never be a negative number, kids. You're squaring the negative out. The negative's gone. So it's 144 minus 4 times 3 times.
times negative 1. So what have I got underneath my radical? 12 plus or minus the square root of what? 144 plus 12. 144 plus 12. That's right. Is that 156? <coughs> this is not new stuff. This is review. It's extra practice for us. So now we've got to break down the 156, right? So 2 goes into it. I do my figuring over to the side yeah. and I'm old and I'm the teacher and I'm still having to do figuring right that's what we do we write it down okay so then I can take 2 into 78 and 39 is what 3 times 13 so I've got a couple of twos right So I'm going to have 12 plus or minus 2 root 39 over 6, because these two didn't come out. Now, see your triangle here? Can you cancel in your triangle? Yep. By 2. By 2. So you're going to have 6 plus or minus the square root of 39 over 3. Yep. Taking a 2 out here, a 2 out here, and a 2 out here. And that is the answer to the problem. Now, that was a lot of work. A lot of work. But none of it is <coughs> new work. Nope. We can do that. Tyler? Uh, can you divide 6 by 12 since it's divisible by 156 too? You mean back here? Yeah. Okay, no. Because you cannot cancel the numbers outside with the numbers inside the radical. Uh, you're allowed to cancel, like if you had if you had this, you could cancel because the whole thing is under, but you can't cancel that until you get something out in front of it. All right, anything else about that problem? Okay, look at number B. Scary looking problem. Get the distributor, right? Minus one. Looking at B. It's you okay. Well, it looks scary to me. So, how would I even start? How would I even start that problem? Distribute. This is an ugly equation. It looks like a really hard equation. How would I start it? Foil. Foil. Right here? Absolutely. Now, do you see how your gut instinct just got kind of jumps in? We've never done a problem like this before. If you can think about it. Let's foil. Okay, let's foil. So, Jabron, foil for me, man. What do I get here? x squared Perfect. minus 2x plus x minus 2. Perfect. And then don't forget I still have that plus 5x on the end, right? These problems are big. Okay. Now what do you suggest, Thomas Berg? Add like your mole. Yeah. Over here, clean yeah. this mess up over so here. All right. So I'll leave this alone, okay, for now. So and then over here, what am I going to have? Uh, x squared. Uh, minus 1x. Or plus 1x. Minus, minus 1x. Minus 2. Okay, now be careful. I have, actually, I have three x terms. So let's put them all together. So what's negative 2 plus 1? Negative 1. Plus 5? 4. So I'm going to have plus 4x. Now, did everybody follow along? There are three x's here that need to be added together. Yes. So negative 2 and 1 is negative 1, and then 5 makes 4. All right, now what? All these are going to 
um, plus 4x, like, go on there. Like, add 4x to the other side. Subtract, oh, here you mean? Yeah, they all cancel, though. Actually, I don't think anything's going to cancel. Let's subtract x squared, subtract 4x, oh, and add 2. What is my motivation? <coughs> I'm trying to get it equal to zero. zero. This is a quadratic equation. It's just like this one. I want to get it set equal to zero. zero. Always, always, always. So I'm going to subtract the x squared, subtract the 4x, and add the 2. So what do I end up with? Over here, I get zero. What do I get here? X squared. 2x squared. Minus 8x plus 4. So what do I do now? I can use the quadratic formula. And if you want to, do you notice how all these are divisible by 2? So if you wanted to, you could divide everything by 2. I am not trying to confuse you. I'm just trying to shrink down my numbers a little bit. You do not have to divide by 2. You can go ahead and use this A, this B, and this C. But since they're all divisible by 2, I might as well just get rid of it. A is 1, B is negative 4, C is 2. Work it out for me. Work it out, work it out. Let's see. Go team, go. Everybody's doing it. Work it out. You know what, I was thinking about that for Jerome, but um, <laughs> that's what I got. Is that what you got, Jerron? Two plus yes. or minus two? Yes, it is. Let's let everybody catch up, though.
Jabron is going to do it at the board, but you all are going to do it at your seats. Problem C. I want you to think about what makes sense, and I want you to do it. You don't need to watch Debron. I want you to do it yourself. Your homework is posted. I love 